one of the things we'd like to do this evening is to honor some very special people, starting with Glenn and Colwell. Janet is daughter's chair. I'm going to ask Janet to come on up, and I've asked her to share a few words, and I have a few things I'd like to say as well. I tried to get Dad out tonight, but at 90, it gets dark and cold, and he said, not, not tonight. So anyway, I'm going to give you just a brief history. I'm going to try and say it also faster so I can have a long evening ahead. Um, okay. Um, for those who don't know, in 1954, two widows got together, Grandmother Robertson, if you're familiar with South Valley, and Mildred Cox, and another seminary student started a small Sunday school in, uh, down near Minata Woods, about maybe, I don't know, nine to 12 people. It was very small. Um, two years later, um, through their great faith, the land was um, purchased by a loan from the Southern Baptist Home Mission Board for this wing of the building right here, um, as you go that direction, the north wing. In 1960, um, no wait, in 1956, right, then, oh wait, I'm confused. Somewhere along the way, okay, wait, I wasn't confused at home, but I am now. Um, they, a couple, two years later, that was in, in between that, 58, before this, no, this one, before this was built, 58, um, Dad entered on the scene, and they called to become their pastor. It was a very small group, and they had great faith. And they said to him, we cannot promise you a salary, but we can promise that you'll have food on the table and a roof over your head. And my dad talked to my mom, who was a nurse, and they said, let's do it. So um, in 1960, after it had been a couple years, um, Dad had great faith. He really, he does have great faith. An amazing baby. And he realized that the property for future expansion for our, the church was severely limited. So he led in purchasing several properties bordering, bordering the church uh, across the creek and what we used to call Silver Green. And then in 62, they added the sanctuary. And so now we've got our view. Um, then in 67, he had another vision. He thought we were only a Christian school in Scotts Valley. And he wanted his kids to go to Christian school. And so um, he talked to David Wallace over at Valley Christian Schools and asked if he would come and help us start Fremont Christian School. And that very same year in September, we started. Um, I was in the first seventh grade class, and there were four of us. We couldn't get away with a thing. <laughs> at that point, also, the adjacent properties were sold, and they wanted to purchase what was called the Fireman's Field, which is right out here, the Athletic Field. And so um, people left some property and bought that, knowing that the school would need um, room to play, room to grow, and the church would need room to grow. All of that I say just to show you that um, Dad was always a look to the future and um, make as big an impact on Scotts Valley as possible. Um, the rest is just kind of history. Thanks to Dad's vision and his faith, um, this facility was debt-free um, when he stepped down. Just kind of a miracle. Yes, thank you. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention my mom because she was a very powerful impact behind my dad. Um, she was a people lover. <coughs> Some of you perhaps know her a little before she passed. She was amazing. In fact, we had to um, show you what kind of people lovers they were. We had 19 foster children between the ages of them, you know, I was two, uh, 16, passed through our home mm -hmm. while I was growing up. Um, several still call me every Bible study and Easter call on Mother's Day, and I'm still a part of the family. Um, anything to impact people for Christ, that was mom and dad. Um, so my mom was also very instrumental in leading my dad to the Lord through her best friend's husband, who then led him into ministry, which was cool. Um, if I could sum it up, I would tell you that Glenn Caldwell, in my eyes, has amazing integrity, is disciplined, is a man of faith. He's determined to share Christ continue, continuously, and I've never met anyone more committed to changing the world for Christ than my dad. So, just a little about the <laughs> Um, you know
You may know that Glennon has authored several books. One of them was on his life story called In the Potter's Hand. I just want to read his introduction. He says, why am I writing this treatise about my life? I've never been the pastor of a mega church, a great conference speaker or evangelist, a brilliant counselor directing the lives of thousands, a rich and successful businessman, a brilliant investor. You get the idea. I've only been a timid, reticent farm boy, a regular soldier who never surpassed the rank of corporal, an operator of coin and slot machines, one-armed bandits, they called them in those days, owner of a beer joint, organizer and labor union leader, and pastor of one church that never surpassed about 500 in membership. But I can tell you this, Glennon has made an immense mark on this town and the lives of beyond what we can count, beyond what we can count. I know um, when I came here, um, not only was Glennon a pastor here of some 28 years, but uh, his son Chris, who's with us tonight, pastored for 12 years here at this church. And uh, Janet has been pastoring here for, <laughs> or ministering here, not pastoring, ministering here for your entire life. And, uh, you know, I, I regret when I came here, I did not have the appreciation of the heritage that I stepped into that I do today. It is absolutely amazing, and we are the benefactors of this man and his desire to follow God. Um, so, your dad is a great man, and what um, we wanted to do, and I've discussed this with the elders, we want to um, just recognize him. So, you know, we've been doing campus projects here, um, and years ago we redid the den, and we've been calling it the den. Uh, but from this point forward, we are not going to call it just the den anymore. It is going to be called the Caldwell Den. <laughs> so we've got signs. <laughs> and uh, this picture will be um, hanging in the uh, Caldwell Den from now on, okay? So... Anyhow, just a way to remember, we never want to forget, and I don't think we could. And your mom as well. Yeah, your mom is special. So, yeah. Okay, well, thank you, Janet. I know uh, Glennon was very gracious when I arrived. I was a little bit nervous because he had been here for so long. His son had pastored, and so... We went out to Pete's Coffee at his request, and I'm like, oh, man, what's going to happen? And, and uh, you know, he sat down, and he goes, Fred, he goes, you're now the pastor, the senior pastor here. He goes, my recommendation to you is you take whatever bylaws you've got, tear them up, write a new set, and just follow God and go for it. You know, he was so encouraging, always has been. He has never said a discouraging or anything like that whatsoever toward me. It's always been encouraging. Always, so uh, that's just huge. 